Let's just remind ourselves, in light of what Bernie Sanders is now doing, in light of what AOC is doing, in light of the entire unified Democratic Party, and how they all march in lockstep behind Joe Biden and the Democratic establishment, what this Bernie Sanders movement was supposed to be in 2016, the way in which he described it. Here is a video uh, from the 2016 debate between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. And just listen to a little bit of what Bernie said about the kind of movement that he was leading and what its objectives were. Well, I'll, I, 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 I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you. Yeah. I am very Go glad, ahead. Anderson, that Secretary Clinton has discovered religion on this issue. But it's a little bit too late. Secretary Clinton supported virtually every one of these disastrous trade agreements written by corporate America. I voted to save the auto industry. He voted against the money that ended up saving the auto industry. I got to just watch that again because... Remember, she, Hillary Clinton, was one of the most unpopular political figures in decades. And if you want to remember why, let's just listen to that again. I voted to save the auto industry. He voted against the money that ended up saving the auto industry. I I mean, who wouldn't want to hear that for four years straight? How is it possible that she lost not just the general election, but to Donald Trump? But also this presidential primary that she only ended up being the winner of because the DNC cheated. That is a pretty big difference. Well, I, if you are talking about the Wall Street bailout, where some of your friends destroyed this economy, you know. No, excuse me, I'm talking. Let him spawn. If you're going to talk, tell the whole story, Senator Sanders. Let me tell my story, you tell yours. I will. Your story is for voting for every disastrous trade agreement and voting for corporate America. Did I vote against the Wall Street bailout? When billionaires on Wall Street destroyed this economy, they went to Congress and they said, oh, please, we'll be good boys, bail us out. You know what I said? I said, let the billionaires themselves bail out Wall Street. Shouldn't be the middle class of this country. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait, can I finish? You'll have your turn. Why should the people of Flint believe that you aren't just using this crisis to score political points? I worked throughout my time uh, as a young lawyer, uh, as a uh, a person, an activist, uh, certainly in Arkansas, then in uh, the White House, to try to fix problems wherever I saw them. And this problem is one that is particularly um, outrageous and painful at the same time. So when I heard about it, I immediately sent people here to find out what was going on. It was almost unbelievable. We have this problem in other places, but we don't say that it was actually caused by decisions made by public officials in positions of authority as this one was. What is absolutely incredible to me is that water rates have soared in Flint. You are paying three times more for poison water than I'm paying in Burlington, Vermont, for clean water. First thing you do is you say, people are not paying a water bill for poison water. I mean, that was the campaign. The campaign was, we don't have minor policy difference of the Democratic Party. What we have is a Democratic Party establishment that is fundamentally and radically corrupted, that cheats, that subverts a fair vote, that serves their large donor class, the same donor class that funds the Republican Party, and that is willing to destroy the middle class and vacuum it out in order to keep doing trade deals that deindustrialize the United States and which destroy the middle class. That was Bernie Sanders' critique. The entire campaign, the whole point was to dismantle the Democratic establishment because it was rotted at its core. I want to bring Savvy on in just a second to talk about what the Democratic Party and Bernie Sanders are now doing. But before we do, let's just look at one other video clip just to remind ourselves of what these Democrats just a few years ago were pretending they were, what they pretended to believe.
But the point about foreign policy is not just to know that you can overthrow a terrible dictator. It's to understand what happens the day after. And in Libya, for example, the United States, Secretary Clinton, as Secretary of State, working with some other countries, did get rid of a terrible dictator named Gaddafi. But what happened is a political vacuum developed. ISIS came in and now occupies significant territory in Libya and is now prepared, unless we stop them, to have a terrorist foothold. But this is nothing new. This has gone on 50 or 60 years where the United States has been involved in overthrowing governments. Mossadegh back in 1953. Nobody knows who Mossadegh was. Democratically elected prime minister of Iran. He was overthrown by British and American interest because he threatened oil interest of the British. And as a result of that, the Shah of Iran came in, terrible dictator. As a result of that, you had the Iranian revolution coming in, and that's where we are today. Unintended consequences. All right, so the Democratic Party is a party of corporatism. It has corrupted its core. It goes around the world supporting wars and the overthrowing of governments that unleashes huge amounts of anti-American sentiment. That was the critique of Bernie Sanders. One aims straight at the heart of the Democratic Party establishment. Now, just this week, Bernie Sanders presented himself as the chief unity enforcer of the Democratic Party, degrading himself to such an extent that as you see here in Politico, he attacked his longtime friend and vocal supporter in 2016 and 2020, Cornell West, who's running as a Green Party candidate. We had him on our show. We intend to do so again. You heard from him directly because Cornell West crime is doing what Bernie Sanders claimed he wanted to do, which was to radically subvert the power of the Democratic Party establishment. And yet, instead of joining that cause, Bernie is now the chief defender of the Democratic Party, along with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. In many ways, they have become the most valuable instruments of the Democratic Party establishment they once pretended to dedicate themselves to subverting and undermining because they lend what is left of their credibility as party dissidents to persuade others who followed them that somehow the way they can continue to serve what they perceive as this radical anti-establishment agenda is by remaining in servitude until the end of time to that very same Democratic Party establishment now represented by Joe Biden. So to talk about what this all means, and there's several other interesting components to this that I want to cover, we are delighted to have on our show. We've been trying to get her on our show for some time. Uh, she's a very busy woman, and it's difficult to do so. We're thrilled we were able to make it work. She's Sabrina Salvati, who's the host of the Savvy Sav podcast. She's also the co-host of the Revolutionary Blackout Network, which is familiar to our audience. We've had other hosts, including Nick Cruz, on our show many times. I believe Savvy was on our show in kind of the prelude rehearsal version of our show, but never actually on the show itself. So, Savvy, we're so excited that we were able to make this work. Good evening to you, and thanks so much for joining us. Hi, Glenn. Thanks so much for having me on. Absolutely. So I am very excited to talk to you about this new role that Bernie Sanders has. Or you know what? Maybe it's not a new role. I don't actually think it's a new role. I just think it's a clearer role, which is as the attack dog for the very Democratic Party establishment that he long claimed to be devoted to subverting and undermining. And the way in which he did that this week was by being the leader of the attack, the increasingly ugly, ugly attacks on what was alleged to be his longtime friend, somebody who vocally supported him, who he's now turning around in the media and attacking, and that's Cornell West. What do you make of all that? I think that what Bernie Sanders is doing to Cornell West is absolutely pathetic. I want people to understand what this is really about. Bernie Sanders is a tool of the Democratic Party. What they have done is they have taken someone who appeared to be outside the duopoly because he's a registered independent, 
And they have used Bernie Sanders to basically usher people into the Democratic Party, pretending to be an outsider, to pretending to be anti-establishment and rallying up a base of young people and working class people and getting those people energized about a political revolution that Bernie Sanders knew was never going to happen through the Democratic Party. I want to be very clear about that. And then in turn, what Bernie Sanders is to do when they do not allow him to win and they won't allow him to win even in the future is to take those those supporters, that base, and to tell them to vote for the corporate establishment that he told them to fight back against. Now you see Bernie Sanders attacking Cornell West. Cornell West has the guts to do what Bernie Sanders did not have the guts to do. Bernie Sanders says that this is to protect democracy. But Bernie Sanders knows, even when it comes to his own presidential campaigns, there really wasn't a real democracy, at least when we not look through the Democratic Party, because of the superdelegates. Bernie Sanders, till this day, doesn't really mention the DNC fraud lawsuit. He doesn't talk about the fact that DNC attorney Bruce Spiva argued that the DNC is a corporation. The judge ruled in that case that the DNC can select a candidate and does not owe you a fair election. But Bernie Sanders doesn't mention this. Bernie Sanders is doing a press tour telling everybody how we have to protect democracy so you should not support Cornell West and you should support Joe Biden. Once again, he's telling you to support the corporate candidates that he told you to push back against and to fight against. So what people have to understand is that Bernie Sanders is a tool of the Democratic Party to make you think that you are going to get progress, but to water it down and to prevent you from having any strong outside grassroots movement that is going to change the system. So let's remind ourselves that Bernie Sanders technically is not even a member of the Democratic Party. He is somebody who has long praised the third party candidates who challenge the two party system, saying that the two party system is radically corrupted. The Democrats and the Republican establishments have far more in common than they do differences, that alternatives are crucial. And here you now have not just anybody as an independent candidate, but someone who's supposed to be his friend someone who supported his campaign vocally in the last two presidential elections. So even if Bernie Sanders at the end of the day wants to end up supporting Joe Biden the way he did in 2016 and 2020, what does it say to you about Bernie Sanders' character that he's willing to take the lead? In it? I don't think anyone other than AOC, who we'll get to in a minute, has directly criticized or attacked Cornell West until Bernie Sanders did it a year and a half out before there's a single primary vote cast. What does it say to you about his character that he's doing this with such gusto? It tells you that Bernie Sanders is just as corrupt as the corporate Democrats that he tells you to fight back against. He's really no different. I think that Bernie Sanders got marching orders from the DNC leadership. He follows DNC leadership, even though he's supposed to be an independent. And I'm pretty sure they told Bernie Sanders, get out there and get what's left of your base and get those people energized to come in and support Joe Biden so that we don't lose to Donald Trump. This is really how, how this works. When Democrat leadership tells them to do something, they do it. This is why the squad members don't really push back or fight back the way that they're supposed to. All of these people are destined or really want to keep their seats. That's a more, more important to them. That's become more important to them. Book deals are more important to them. These speaking fees are more important to them than actually fighting for the people, which is what they ran on. I think that Bernie Sanders seriously owes working class people a public apology for taking their last five dollars for taking their last ten dollars i watched people travel for hours to come to see bernie sanders speak here in boston because they believed that he was going to fight for medicare for all for them and the way that he has treated these people you don't even see Bernie Sanders on left independent media anymore, Glenn. He's doing a press, a press tour. He won't go on to TYT. He's definitely not going to come on to my show. He would never come on my come show. On he would show. never come on my show. Somebody who had supported me during the Snowden reporting, who supported me when Brazil tried to prosecute me, whose campaign I don't explicitly support in 2016, but very obviously supported over Hillary Clinton. He would never come on this show or any other show that is in any way separated from the Democratic Party establishment, because as you said, Bernie Sanders is not separated from the Democratic Party establishment. 
Thanks for watching this clip from System Update, our live show that airs every Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on Rumble. You can catch the full nightly shows live or view the backlog of episodes for free on our Rumble page. You can also find full episodes the morning after they air across all major podcasting platforms, including Spotify and Apple. All the information you need is linked below. We hope to see you there.